afternoon. Well, middle of the day, shall we say, middle of the day. Hello, FlossTube, it's Jen here, not cross Jen. I am coming to you on this Wednesday, the 26th of August. Can you believe it? Can you believe that? August is almost over. Um, I'm here with FlossTube number seven. Again, can you believe that? <laughs> I've made seven of these videos now. Um, this is the seventh one. So hello and welcome. Welcome if you're joining me for the very first time and welcome back if you've watched some of my videos before. Um, I'm almost at 300 subscribers, which is just ludicrous. And one of my videos, the one where the title said that I would talk about my Mirabilia conversion is on more than 1000 views, <laughs> which is just crazy. And I... I researched it actually and the statistic is if somebody watches the video for more than 30 seconds that's when it counts as a YouTube view. So it, in fairness there'll be quite a few of those that might be me when I go back it onto the video on my phone to read comments and reply to comments. Um, sometimes it starts playing and then I, I pause it pretty immediately because I don't want to listen to myself but it's, it is possible <laughs> some of those um, are inflated by me when I go back on. Um, but yeah, I mean, not that many, certainly not a thousand on that one one video. So that's just amazing. Um, did I say I'm not cross Jen? So you find me here on FlossTube on YouTube. My channel is called Not Cross Jen. And I also use Instagram, uh, Not Cross Jen there as well, but no spaces within my name on that one. Um, and I post lots of my stitching pictures there. So I kind of keep everything separate from my personal Instagram, which I tend not to use actually. Um, not very often anyway, not as often as I use the cross stitching one to, to see what other people are stitching. So let's go straight in to Q&A first. I can't remember if I normally do Q&A or life update, but let's say we're doing Q&A. And the first, well, the only person to actually ask any questions on the last video was Nicola again, my local stitchy friend Nicola. And her questions, so there was a question where she asked how many pages are on the All Cats Go to Heaven, um, Heaven and Earth designs in total. And I think I've completed, or I've nearly completed page seven is the last partial page on that top row. I will show it to you guys in whips, um, but it's buried underneath my whip pile at the minute, so I'm not going to pull it out. Um, so I think the top row has seven pages, and I reckon that there's five rows in total. The bottom one might be partials. I'm 35 rings a bell. I think it's five rows of seven pages. Um, but yeah, the, the right hand side and the bottom ones might be partial, partial sizes. Um, and you've asked Ah, so you've commented about how I do count my stitches quite often for stitchy games and things I do. So the main one I do is Myth and Magic Stitch Wars, which is a Facebook group, which everybody is welcome to join in. And it's a really um, a fun way to make progress. You can stitch on any whip, but you do have to take before and after pictures and count your stitches. So you've asked me whether I ever kind of do any, any workings of how long it will take me to finish a project if I keep up the same sort of pace. Um, but the answer is no, because I have so many whips and I stitch them different ones at different times. So sometimes I think like on the, on the Hades, I think, oh, if I carried on stitching and I could finish, you know, like say it takes me a week or so, if I just stitched on that to finish a page, then I could do, you know, and then I said I could do a pay, a, a, a page every month. Then how long will it take and work that out knowing that I've got like 28 pages left now. Um, but honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't really count for anything because there'll be months where I don't stitch at all on certain projects and then other months where I, something random comes upon me and I feel like I must finish it there and then and I just kind of crack on. So yeah, I, I don't necessarily really uh, do anything like that. I've seen some people use Excel spreadsheets and they, they populate like each stitchy session. They say I stitched for this many hours and this is how many stitches I did and they keep like a running total of how, what their stitchy pace is. Um, I think people, I've seen that done more if you just kind of work on one full coverage project all the time, if you're a one whip kind of gal, which I am certainly, certainly not. Um, what was I going to say though? I was going to say something there. No, gone. Mm -mm. Totally gone. Totally gone. So um, thank you, Nick, for those two questions. 
Um, and let's wriggle right along into life update. So, not much to say to be honest. Um, still working from home pretty much entirely. Last week I went into the Bristol office and collected some equipment. So I collected an office chair and a monitor just to make myself a little bit more comfortable working at home. So um, because I know it's quite recent in my camera roll, I'll insert a picture here for you of my setup now for working at home. So I use one of our spare rooms. Um, so like there's a, a double bed kind of right behind me where I sit at the desk, but it's it's a pretty pleasant room to work in really. And we're lucky we've got another spare room, a, a smaller one with a single bed in, which is where Rob is able to work too. Because we, I'm, I'm on the phone like most of my days when I'm at work, so it would drive Rob absolutely nuts if we had to work in the same room. So um, I think, as I said, today is Wednesday, so it's my day off again, my weekly day off, and I'm still completely loving it. I'm just going to keep telling you guys, I'm just bragging really how excited I am to be off on Wednesdays. Um, last Wednesday I did have to log on in the morning. I was having a twilight binge. It was, it was amazing. I was just stitching here on the sofa, watching twilight on that telly right there. Uh, but I had something that was stressing me out a bit at work. So I needed to be on my laptop because I was waiting for someone to do something that then I needed to be able to move along. So I did end up logged on kind of keeping an eye on my emails for all morning really on Wednesday which is such a shame because then I didn't feel like I got that full day's break from thinking about work so yeah for today I'm categorically not doing anything work related and actually we're going out to um like a brewery I guess a beer brewery I'm pretty sure type it's Tiny Rebel in Newport and somebody recommended their burgers to us and today is the last Wednesday of August so it's the last chance to get the um money off for eating out eating out to help out so we should get um quite a cheap meal really so we're we're leaving to do that right when i finish this floss tube so you guys might be in luck and that might be prompting me to um speed through things a little bit but i do have quite a lot to show you the only other thing I could think to add for life update, oh, actually two things. Um, most importantly, I should say Nicola, my local stitchy best bud, has really been in the wars and she's been, um, she was admitted to hospital uh, via A&E with awful pancreatitis, which I think I'm saying correctly. And actually yesterday she was whipped back in to have her gallbladder taken out. Um, so yeah, lots of well wishes should be sent her way if you know her or even just just send her some positive healing thoughts she i think she's fine but i think she's putting on a brave face as well and she needs to just chill out a bit and take things slow so that she can recover really nicely from the operation um but yeah that was pretty amazing so she went in yesterday and they operated through the belly button and they pull out the gallbladder and it's it's done so yeah it's I, i'm sure <laughs> it was a lot more stressful than that but um fascinating to me anyway but yeah, so lots of best wishes to you, Nick, and we hope you get well soon. And we still need to watch some Christmas in July Hallmark films together. So let's hope that we can do that very soon, even though it will be September, I expect, before we get around to doing that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just say was we've we had crazy weather. We've had really crazy weather. The last few days here, it's been really stormy. We're actually having quite a nice, still, calm, sunny day today, which is a good day for filming. Um, but yeah, we've had horrendous windy storms. But last week and the week before, I would say, we had some super, super hot weather, really hot weather, like too hot to work, too hot to do anything. Um, and I was able to go swimming. We went in the sea twice during the really hot weather. So we went in Porthcawl, um, Porthcawl has a beach called Rest Bay, and we swam in the sea there. And by swam, I mean like splashed around and squealed a lot and jumped. Um, the waves were amazing. So yeah, like enjoyed jumping up and down and avoiding the waves. And then um, in the middle of the week after then, I think it was the Wednesday or the Thursday. Yeah, it was the Wednesday, I think. I had my day off and it was baking hot and I couldn't even enjoy my day off. It was too sticky to stitch. It was too hot to have a successful nap. Um, so I was really quite grouchy, but uh, what we did when we got to the evening was jumped in the car and drove. It takes about 45 minutes to get to Barry Island and we went in the sea there as well. And actually the sun went in and it got really cold really fast and Rob got pretty chilly, but I wasn't ready to get out of the sea yet. So we just kind of enjoyed um, floating around there and that was quite quiet actually. So whereas Porthcawl had been really busy, um, Barry Island at like seven o'clock at night was nice and quiet. Um, 
For people that are not Welsh or local to Wales and don't know about these places, um, Barry Island, I will just say, is um, the place where a lot of Gavin and Stacey is set. So Gavin and Stacey is a Welsh comedy. There's a few series of it and Rob and I just absolutely love it. We know it kind of like word for word pretty much the whole series or the all three series and there are some Christmas specials and there was the most amazing Christmas special last Christmas as well so we hadn't had one for a few years and then they filmed one and it was incredible so I thoroughly recommend that everybody should watch Gavin and Stacey and actually we have American friends in Detroit who came to visit us and we told them before they came to visit that they must watch all of Gavin and Stacey so that we could then take them to Barry Island and it was really fun and I think that like they got it and they liked the humour because it it is quite Welsh like there's quite a lot of the Welsh accent in the characters and stuff but I, I think you've got please try it just try it for me because it's it's epic so that is Gavin and Stacey I don't know why I'm here on a cross stitch video 10 minutes in telling you about Gavin and Stacey but hey so let's move right in to stitching and new starts big swig of tea so one new start to show you and I'm keeping it in this amazing project bag I just have a lipstick in my teeth, I do, don't I? Oh, that's nasty. Okay, hold that up, wipe away my lipstick. Uh, this is uh, an amazing project bag. I don't know who created it because I won it in a raffle that was arranged, or like an Instagram raffle, raffle? Auction, auction, um, by Lollipop Stitches, who's another UK stitcher who's really fun to watch, so you should go check her out on her floss tubes and her Instagram. Um, and it's got cats in Christmas outfits, Santa hats and like, a Christmas scarf and I just love it and then it's really smart on the front vinyl um it's just really beautifully made and it's got a cute little fob which I've tucked inside there look one of these kind of things you know like they were all the rage that all the kids were making these things for a while um and what I've got in here is Jack's Bash by Plum Street Samplers which have I got the I've got the chart here yep so I can show you um why is it wonky I always do this there you go so that's um what it looks like the chart. It's my first ever Plum Street Samplers and I wanted to start it on the 13th of August for Dark 13 Stitching and I was really building up to that. It was going to be a whole big thing and I wrote it in my stitchy calendar, 13th of August, everything was great and then I was doing, what was I doing? I was spending like a couple of days on each whip at the start of August. How was I doing it? Four days? Yeah, I was trying to do four days on each whip um, until the 13th. And for some reason, the, the whip that I was working on before I started this, I'd actually only done three days, but felt like I'd done four. And then I cracked on and started this on the 12th of August. Posted on my Instagram how excited I was to have this dark 13 new Halloween start, and it was still the 12th of August. Um, so Justine commented on there, she was the first one within a couple of seconds or minutes to say, isn't it the 12th, with that hilarious emoji, which obviously it was. Um, so yeah, not quite a dark 13 start, but I did then stitch on it on the day of dark 13. So huge piece of fabric, but here is where I got to. So this fabric is 35 count, um, I think it's Edinburgh linen in vintage country mocha. I bought it from Lakeside Needlecraft and I'm using pretty much all of the gentle arts threads. So yeah, I've done quite a quite a nice lot and I'm really, really loving it. Really loving it. The um the black is Raven, which I just really, really love. And what I did was um bought these silver rings on Amazon for only a few quid, like six quid, um, because I w I've never really known how to organise like gentle arts when they come on thread drops like this with a, a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. Um and then you'll see that for the DMC ones. Um, I don't have nice fancy thread drops yet so I literally use like the back of a refill pad and hole punched like at random intervals holes but that works for the four DMC ones that I'm using. So yeah and I really enjoy this and what I do is I, oh you can't see my Larry it's like tucked around the side but I can hang it on the one of the levers of the Larry which is quite cute. Really enjoying that and actually my amazing cat friend Tina who lives up the hill from here has a it's not a Cricut, Cricut, but a similar like cutting machine printer, super clever thing. And I went up to see her on the weekend and we mapped out some thread drops that she's going to cut out of card for me. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll be able to start using them lots more because it's a really fun way to organise floss and pretty inexpensive as well. So that was Jack's Bash. 
new start. So let's move really quickly into whips. I have seven whips to show you. No, I don't. I've worked on seven whips, but one of them is Jack's Bash. So in fact, I've got six new ones to show you. So when I last saw you on the 1st of August, I had started, I'd either started or I was starting Beauty and the Beast by Avrora CS, which is an Etsy seller. So I'll insert a picture here of what it looks like the full thing. And I've made some amazing progress because I was trying to stitch some big ingredients for Myth and Magic Stitch Wars. So loads and loads of progress at the top of this. And you can see the rose coming in. So this is like the bell jar with the rose inside. Um, I just absolutely love it. Super fun to stitch. Um, and do you guys ever like remember what you were watching or what you're listening to whilst you were stitching as well? So I watched a whole host of This Is Us on Amazon Prime, which I absolutely love as well, whilst I was stitching this bad boy. This is just on 20 count white Ada and it's so narrow this that I've got room definitely to do a whole nother stained glass window down here um, and I have I did actually purchase I think when I bought this it was a three for two on Etsy so I did also buy a Toy Story one because my brother absolutely loves Toy Story and a Minions one because I and Rob, Rob and I absolutely love Minions so I really might just kind of crack on and stitch another one on there at some point as well. And I'm just using one thread of DMC and it stitches really nice. So I think I've said before, the coverage is kind of sparse, but actually it's, I think it's beautiful. I'm re it's really pleasant to stitch with. And obviously the thread goes a longer way when you're stitching over one. So yeah, that's Beauty and the Beast. Then Pandemic is the next one. Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. Oh, so first of all, I will insert the picture here of the whole big old beast whilst I have a slurp of tea. And here is where I've got to. So this is two finished pages. So I think last time I saw you, I had pretty, oh, I haven't finished the page one actually, because I stitched on this on the 5th, 6th and 7th of August after filming the floss tube on the 1st. And it was on the 7th that I got the page one finish. And then, um, oh, I haven't marked it on here, have I? But I stitched on it for another three or four days basically a little bit later in August and then on Sunday the 16th is when I got the second well I'm calling it a page finish I'm missing out there's quite a lot of like tiny fiddly backstitch in the bottom here um, which I'm going to come back to but I figured it was it was done in terms of crosses so yeah that's page one and two of pandemic and I'm keeping I wouldn't normally keep like scraps of paper attached but I've made a mistake where is it in this bottom little um kind of corner shaped thing here um I went wrong I've left like an extra space so I've written this note to myself for when I go back to it to make sure I remember not to count anything off of this little motif here which is smart gen thinking that is and this is using 310 and the 115 beautiful variegated red which now I've got more and more things stitched in the red it really really shows up lovely and the fabric is 28 count even weave by KLT Charting in Rum and Raisin. Okay, so the next one that I worked on, I spent three days on my Heaven and Earth, All Cats Go to Heaven, which is artwork by Jim Warren. And here's where I got to. So I, oh, should I insert a before? I should be inserting a before really, shouldn't I? Um, so yeah, sorry, let's show you the before. And I'll show you the full design as well, what the whole thing is going to look like. And now I can show you what I worked on. So I finished this bottom bit here, which was page six. Yeah, finished page six on the 11th of August. I only had a tiny little bit left to do really that I just kind of left in there because this is all one color 3761 of DMC, all this stuff here. And each square is a 10 by 10 block. So that's a hundred stitches in every one of those. So it's a lot of flipping stitches. So yeah, I just left those a few bits down there to fill in. So this bit wouldn't be so boring. Um, it's not too much plain blue to do now really before I get into a bit more like fluffy, cloudy kitten stuff to finish off the page. Um, so yeah, lots of really, really good progress on that one. Um, I'm hoping next time or the time after anyway, 
not but before too long I'm hoping to have this page finished and then I'll unroll it and be able to sort of take a picture of the whole the whole top row being finished so that's that that's stitched on 25 count even weave oh, not even weave Lugana um, easy count is what I meant to say not even weave so the easy count means it's got the grey grids on which should wash out people assure me that it does wash out and I will I'm not panicking about that now because I'm way too far in to even consider the possibility that the lines won't wash out and the whole thing would be for nothing so let's not even go there um, the next whip that I worked on oh I've listed it as a whip this was Jack's Bash so we did a few days on that then I started spinning an arbitrary August wheel on tiny decisions which is super fun and the first whip that it chose for me was dobby so um i can insert a picture here of where i was starting from and then i'll show you the mock-up so this is an ebay kit it's my oldest whip that my friend lucy bought me years and years and years ago so this is the mock-up of what he looks like he's stitched just on a, a black bit of ada and then i showed you what i'd done before Here's where he's at now, so he looks pretty cool. Um, somebody on Myth and Magic said it looks terrifying having like eyes with threads dripping out of them. <laughs> but this is just my messy way of stitching and parking um, to try and keep some semblance of order in what I'm doing. So I did stitch like most of this next row here, I would say. Like the eye wasn't totally finished last time, so yeah. I have done quite a bit. And this down here is the absolute bottom of the piece. That's where it kind of all ends. So yeah. Not long to go really, but it, it is slow going on the Black Ada and there are lots of, it is confetti really, full coverage confetti through those bits. Um, but I was happy with three days of progress on Dobby. Uh, the next thing I did was spin the wheel again after I did three days on Dobby um, and it pulled up Game of Swans. So I'll insert a picture for you here of Long Dog Sampler's Game of Swans. And I'll insert a picture of what it looked like last time, where I was starting from. Must I fold my fabric up a little bit? Okay. And this is where I've got to. So I found this up here is the top left hand corner of the design. So I started over here in the top center. Well, maybe along a little bit, it's like the top center. And so I've come all the way over to the left-hand side um, and look at that swan coming up in white as well. So you'll have seen from the mock-up that I've completely switched up the colours. Um, I'm using green hand-dyed even weave by KLT Charting. The colour is Mistletoe Wreath. It was an advent special. So unless you signed up to her advent box last year, I'm not sure you can get it. Um, but I just love it. It's got shades of green and yellow and creams in it. And then the colours that I chose to stitch with are Gentle Arts, which Sarah Marnie of Marnie's Mixed Bag picked out for me. And look, I'm demonstrating how I'm using a ring again. And they're just beautiful, like pinky, creamy, slightly some lilac-y, yellows, just absolutely lovely colours. Um, they do look kind of pale and pas pastel-y on the, on the piece. Um, so they show up like a little bit clearer in real life I would say but I think it's really lovely actually I think it's really subtle it's um not my usual style but I'm absolutely in love with it and I just finished stitching on that last night having done three days and I'm at 13% complete now according to Pattern Keeper so that one's not very stitch heavy actually and it won't won't take like months and months and years and years like pandemic will for example um so that's that. So that's Long Dog Sampler's Game of Swans with the thread. So the last whip to show you is for, I just started it this morning so I've barely done anything on it. Um, and this came up on my next wheel spin so I'm doing three days on this. And it's Home is Where the Cat Is. It's a heritage kit, a complete kit. Um, I think the artwork is by Peter Underhill. Is it Peter Underhill? Yeah. Yeah, because I've got another one of his, which is Meerkats, which is a pain in the backside as well, because there's so many fractional stitches in this. Um, but luckily, I had the foresight to request even weave. I had an option. It was before, oh my gosh, what was our UK cross-stitch site? The big one that then closed down. 
so-and-so, I want to say so-and-so, oh my gosh, complete mind blank, but anyway, um, whichever that was, the big website, before it closed down, I ordered it on there, I think, and they gave me the option of Ada or Even Weave, and I always choose Even Weave if I know I'm going to have fractional, so it gives you that centre hole, because on Even Weave, you stitch over like nine, nine holes is how you make your X, so you've got that middle one to make fractional stitches, um, whereas on Ada, you need to pierce the fabric in between holes. So yeah, this is where I'm at. So that's the grey cat on the top of the chair. If I hold them together, you can see him coming along there. So yeah, hoping to get some good progress on this in the next three days. Um, I'm stitching it for my friend Nicola, but not the Nicola that I'm always talking about on here. Um, she's a cat protection friend, Nicola, who... Um, she's amazing, she's hilarious, she's got lots of cats that she absolutely adores and she found me, um, or she found on Facebook somebody was giving away their cross stitch stash and she messaged me and said do you want me to go and collect this for you because it's near where she lived, not very far, not, not very close to where I am but close to where she lived. Um, so she went, bless her, and collected it up for me and there was loads of lovely lovely stuff and I said Should, like, would you like me to stitch something for you, because she, she used to be a cross stitcher herself um, I can't remember if I offered or she asked, it, it, it really doesn't matter, but we ended up, um, I gave her like a few options of cat related cross stitches to choose from and she picked that one. So yeah, that's what I'm stitching for her. And look what I discovered today actually as well. So it's on um, an 11 by, no, 17 by 11 Q snap and the fabric isn't long enough to, to reach the other side, but I've learned for the first time that it's fine, it gives me fine tension to just have the three, these are like bits of felt that I use to just thicken up and make the clamps hold on a little bit better. But yeah, pro tip I think, that you can, you can sort of manage, I guess it's gonna like loosen quite a lot quicker than it would if I had all four clamps on, but quite happy with that. All right, let's, oh, shift that out of the way, let's, power on um well we're skipping over finishes because i haven't had any finishes other than the page finish for all cats go to heaven and the page finish on pandemic which is actually pretty fantastic progress but you know not like a finished complete project as such so let's move into haul hmm. um, and i've got loads of haul to show you well yeah, quite a quite a good amount um, and some pretty exciting stuff actually. So uh, the first little one to show you is a selection of sulky threads which I ordered on Amazon. You can see the the colours, they're really cool colours. It came up on Amazon as like the second most popular, it, like the item name is called Sulky's second most popular colour palette of threads. So this is 12 weight cotton petites and um, it was on Brenda, the Handwork Maniacs channel, that I saw she was stitching Pandemic in um, one of these, but she's she's bought like a, a bigger spool of it. Um, but I wanted to try them out, so I've ordered these, and then I already have a plan in mind to try them out as well. So I'll insert a picture here of a new mandala that I bought on Etsy. So my lovely Irish Portuguese friend, Philippa, um, she... She's the worst, naughtiest enabler, really, of all, I think, of all of them. Um, just because there's no preamble with her. She's just like, boom, there's a sale happening here, or there's a sale happening here. You need this. You're going to need this. Like, yeah, uh, no qualms, really. So she'd posted that they, this site was having a sale on Etsy, but only for a further half an hour, I think, one evening. So I went on really quickly and I purchased this mandala, which I will insert here. Um, and I will just insert another little screen grab of the name of the shop as well, because I definitely can't remember it, sorry. So that's what I'm planning to stitch and try out these sulkies. Uh, so I will need more, I'm sure, of, of certain colours, depending on how I how I choose to do it. But yeah, I was just having a bit of a, um, a miserable day last weekend. And to cheer myself up, I went on Amazon and I bought this and... A new Barry M nail varnish, which isn't this one. This is a Barry M because I love Barry M nail varnishes. But the one I bought is a lovely purpley, deep purpley grey colour. But I'm going like electric blue for the minute because why not? Um, and I also bought the new Twilight book in that same like group of three things that I just had a little binge on Amazon, um, which I'm reading so far and I am enjoying it. So it's written from Edward's point of view, um, but I'm not sure how far it's going to go because it's. Um, 
she's taken quite a while to, to get to any point with it. So I have a feeling it might only really be telling you about when Edward's meeting Bella. So like when she comes to the school for the first time and he has to sit next to her in science class, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I am really enjoying it because I grew up with those books and I loved them all. So yeah, it's a bit of nostalgia. So I sort of recommend that one as well. So the next thing to show you, last time I saw you, I was telling you guys that on the Sunday I was going to Kim's house in Portsmouth to have a little stitch in the garden with the local Portsmouth stitchers, local South stitchers. They're not all Portsmouth, um, some are Southampton and a little bit further afield. Um, well, myself being the furthest afield, not actually even living in England. But anyways, so I went to see those guys and Kim is the owner of KLT Charting and she had some goodies for me. So... She has made me a thread pack for my next two Heaven and Earth starts. So I'll insert a picture here of Evening by Aframov, who he died last year, I think. Um, so you, you, like his artwork has become a little bit more prominent now just as a result of the news, I think, that he had passed away. Um, but aside from that anyway, I think I'd come up with a plan with some of the Milton Keynes retreat stitches that we would start a new Aframov, either a Heaven and Earth or Artisy also chart Aframov artwork in full coverage cross stitch. Um, so yeah, it was going to be, we just said an Aframov full coverage new start basically for the October retreat, which is coming up in a month's time now, which is amazing. So yeah, I've showed you evening and this is the, the thread pack that Kim's made for me. So I didn't send her the chart, I didn't breach any copyright. What I did was listed out on Excel, like this is the color, the DMC number, and then this is how many stitches I need to be able to do. And then I told Kim the fabric count I'm gonna use, but look at the, um, so from the evening chart, you can see all these beautiful turquoise colors are the majority of it, but then loads of other really cool vibrant colors. Um, I just love it. And it's the first time I've treated myself to thread packs. And I think it's the absolute way forward. Um, just to have it all in one place and just to know you've got no like dye lot issues because it's all come from the same skeins or cones as it were because Kim has quite a lot of DMC cones which we're not allowed as um, consumers here in the UK you we can't get them we can't buy them I mean we could you know I could buy them from US Amazon and pay shipping and stuff but yeah technically not allowed so the other one I'll insert a picture here of Hidden Treasures by Hannah Disney so this is the other heaven and earth that I'd like to start really soon because it's it matches really nicely with my freebie Maui princess which is also a Hannah Lynn Hannah Disney design um so yeah this is the thread pack for that one and I had her make them at the same time because there are some similar colors so like the blues and the darker colors um, so yeah, I thought it'd be a good idea to see if there was, if I was giving her enough, um, thread to warrant buying some new cones and things. So it's worked out really great. So I'm, yeah, absolutely chuffed with that. I don't have a date in mind when I'm going to start that one yet. Um, so we'll see, but I want to start it soon because I want it as a, a, a rack, a random act of kindness on the Heaven and Earth Facebook page. So I like to start it soon just to kind of be able to show the lady that paid for it to pay for, pay for the chart anyway, that I'm cracking on starting it. So the other thing I got from Kim was some fabric. It's the June 2020 limited edition. It's called Sea Mist. Hmm. That's probably about right. So it's like paley, greeny, gray, really pale turquoise aqua. Spread it all out for you. So I ordered a fat quarter, 19 by 27 kind of bring it in a bit to try and give you a sense of it it's yeah just um it's really really nice really nice and it's linen that I ordered um 32 count linen because Kim has started carrying 32 counts and linen as well as even weave now so yeah amazing so that's that and the piece de resistance so I've saved the best to last here um and this was an order that came on the weekend it arrived on saturday and it came all the way from america from under the sea fabrics um so the lady is leslie there that does does hand dye in of amazing fabrics that i'm sure you've heard lots of people talk about under the seas especially u.s stitches of course because she's domestic in america um and what i've bought is a piece of fabric to do the autumn lane stitchery dark queen of the sea sal I'm just going to show it to you because it is insane and I'm praying it comes up nice. Oh, it does look. That's exactly what it looks like. So this is called Bewitched. Look at it. So again, it's a fat quarter, 32 count linen. 
but just look at the purple, the turquoise, it's just absolutely amazing. So Leslie is kind of paired up with Autumn Lane Stitchery, so this is like the, the recommended fabric that they want you to use. Um, and I, so they were, yeah, so Autumn Lane were really encouraging you to buy from Leslie and the shipping was like $15, I think. It's like, it is a lot of money to stitch stuff to the, or stitch, send stuff over to the UK. Um, but I've always kind of fancied trying some under the sea. So I'm, I'm really glad I did. It's really fun to have this and it's going to be a 12 month stitch along. So, you know, I'll be at it for a long while. That's assuming I keep up with it anyway. Otherwise it'll go on for way longer. Um, and what I also got from Leslie was the bead pack as well. Um, so it's not like a, a massive amount of beads, but they there are some Mayuki ones and a Swarovski, that turquoise bigger one is a Swarovski crystal one. Um, and she gives us a free beading needle and a little needle minder kind of gift as well, which was really, really cute. So yeah, I was super excited when those came. Um, okay, last thing to show you within haul, and it's not really haul because this is what I told you guys about last time that I was going to have a go at tea dyeing using some different um, types of tea bags. So the best one, I will show you the best one, is this thing. So I made this. So this is um, 14 count Ada, I'm pretty sure. And how I did it was like splotched tea bags. So I took some various tea bags and put them in a saucepan or we'll put them with boiling water anyway to get them to sort of start to steep, is steep the word? Um, and then I laid this out on the kitchen counter and I just like splodged the tea bags on and just like lifted them up and moved them around periodically. So the lighter brown comes from a green tea, like a green tea with lemon. And then the darker brown is like normal English breakfast tea kind of, probably Yorkshire tea bags it would have been that we are using at the moment, Yorkshire tea. And then the pink is mixed berry tea bags. And then the, that made like blue kind of circles around the pink, which is really cool. So I think that's because it's got like bits of blueberries as well as, as pink berries in that tea. So yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I'm gonna do on it, but it was a whole lot of fun to, to make. It smells very much like tea as well. Um, so I do kind of wonder whether if I handle it and stitch with it, it will go like icky because it's tea and I haven't done anything to seal the the color in as it were um but yeah that was super fun um i've also got a piece of ada here which i it was white and it's now like creamy kind of tea mottly so i used the green tea oh no it's probably lemon and ginger tea actually because i was using i think they're kind of similar colors really so yeah i think this was lemon and ginger tea and then i did bake this one in the oven just for a little while um, but not for too long because I didn't want it to, yeah, so you can kind of see where it's gone a bit browner. It's not showing up all that great, is it? It is subtle. Um, a bit browner where I baked it in the oven and then it starts to like catch and burn a tiny bit. So yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the lemon and ginger tea. Um, this one came out really nice. So this was plain white Ada and I used um, the mixed berry tea. So I had a saucepan on the hob and I plonked it in with like 10 tea bags maybe. It's not showing up very well. Is it better if I come closer? Yeah, that's better, pink look. So yeah, I um, kind of like dyed it in the saucepan for probably 10 minutes or so. And then I whipped it out, put the fabric on the counter and then splodged the, the pink tea bags from the saucepan like over the fabric to get the splodgy effect. So yeah, I really like that one actually. That's pretty pleasant. That'd be nice to stitch with at some point. Then I had a piece of even weave I think this was um, lemon and ginger as well, and then baked. It's really, really subtle. You can't see a great deal on there, but it just made it go a little bit creamer rather than being white, even weave. The last one to show you is, this started out as red Ada. Already, it was already red Ada. And I put it in with some tea bags, like normal tea, I think, like darker tea bags and some like red berry tea bags in the hope that it would like deepen up a bit and like become a little bit more interesting. But really all that happened was the red that was like the fabric was already dyed with started to run out of it. Um, and I, I really didn't like it, it was too garish. I was never gonna use it for anything. So I tried adding some coffee and then baking it. Um, so it's really like irregular. I'm not sure what I actually would ever do with it, but yeah, still all part of a fun Sunday afternoon, try and die in stuff that I'm, you know, and this is all like,
bits of fabric that I had in my stash, probably from like freebies that I've other other stitches have given away or whatever. So yeah, nothing was exactly precious to me. Right, conscious of time. So let's move on into plans. And <clears throat> so my plans are to finish out Arbitrary August. So I'll probably have time for one more spin of my whip wheel once I've done the three days on Home is Where the Cat Is. Um, I also, oh, I've done the pandemic page finish actually. So that was a goal. So I want to try and finish a page finish on pandemic every month, which was Nadine's idea. She's nads underscore X stitch on Instagram and here on Floss Tube as well. She's really lovely. Um, you should go and watch her if you're not already watching her. So yeah, take that one off actually. I've done the pandemic page finish and I'll try in September to get another one. And then on the 1st of September, I do want to start the Dark Queen of the Sea Autumn Lane Stitchery Sale. So I have now bought the PDF, so that will drop as it were on the 1st of September. So we'll all be ready to get started on that. Um, and then September is sampler September is kind of like the hashtag and just the theme of what people sometimes try to stitch in September. So I've created a new wheel. Can you tell I'm getting a bit excited about these um, tiny decision wheels on my phone? So yeah, I created a new one where I've listed all of my um, samplers that I've got, which is mostly long dogs, but then I've got Rolodex morning sampler. I've got Emily's house by Lindy Stitches. I've, I've put Jack's Bash on there as well, actually, because I, th I think that's definitely a sampler. Um, and what I'll do is I'll spin that and I'll try to do a few days on each sampler then as well during September. Um, but I would also like to get that last page on the top row finished on All Cats Go to Heaven um, before I start the Aphra of New Hade. It'd be really great to say I've done all of that first row of, of that current one. Um, so yeah, as ever, loads and loads of stuff planned. Um, please comment below um ask me questions because just having questions from nicola is getting pretty boring now um no offense to nicola because i love that you're here and you watch me and you're my best number one fan um but yeah ask me some questions and then at the start of the next floss tube i'll be happy to answer those um i love reading all of your comments and i try to be really good and respond to them all so yeah um please talk to me in the comments below and just huge thank you for being here and sticking with me and i hope to be back soon i'm gonna try again to be back in two weeks um but this time it slipped to more like three and a half or four um but yeah enjoy your day the rest of your day whatever you're doing and my cheesy sign off is keep stitching <laughs>